Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, we may have had some technical difficulties with the Facebook feed, so I had to recreate this live stream. Um, so hopefully um, those um, will give a notification as to the redirection of this live stream. So hopefully, um, yeah, so we can still have an audience for this live stream. Right. So again, apologies. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about the differences between broad and short lighting. Um, so I'm just going to give it a while until we have a nice audience building. But in the meantime, if you are watching, do tell us where you're from. Tell me your name. Introduce yourself in the comment section so that I know who I am talking to. So I'm just waiting for a crowd to build. Hope you're doing pleasantly well. I'm doing very well, all things considered, minus the gremlins in the system. But yeah, here we are. We're going to have a very nice discussion pertaining to broad and short lighting tonight. Okay, so we have a good crowd building. But as I said, do introduce yourself in the comment section and during the duration of this live stream, uh, if you have any questions to ask, drop them in the comment section. This is why we're doing the live streams in the first place, to interact with you guys. Um, yep, so ask your questions and we'll tackle them as we go along. All right, so I think we can get started. All right, so today's topic is the differences between broad and short lighting. And understanding the differences um, can help us create specific lighting setups for your next portrait shoot. By learning um, the differences, we can learn about light placements, we can learn about how this affects the model's pose, uh, the general look and feel of an image as well. But there's more to it than that. For instance, many of us have asymmetrical faces. And I think that's more than fair to say, uh, meaning we have a good and a bad side. Knowing how to use broad and short lighting can help us emphasize the good side and in a way mask the bad side, the quote unquote bad side. Additionally, these lighting techniques can also, sorry, additionally, these lighting techniques can also help us to create a slimming or broadening effect of the model's face. Um, that can allow us to enhance the uh, facial features of the model or to mask um, you know, any facial imperfections as such. Mood is another important aspect to consider. The different lighting techniques can evoke different emotions and create a general look and feel to our images. So it's important to remember that these principles aren't set in stones, but they provide a solid foundation uh, for us to work from to achieve different desired results. All right, so let me explain the differences between broad and short lighting. So broad and short lighting, uh, these are techniques, lighting techniques, that refer to which side of the face is illuminated by your main light source, or key light, as it, as it, as it is otherwise known as. Broad lighting illuminates the side that is closest to the camera, while short lighting illuminates the side that is furthest away from the camera. These lighting techniques, short and broad lighting, can also be used in combination with the other lighting techniques as well. You know, for example, Rembrandt lighting, loop lighting, um, and split lighting as well. So it's important to note that um, broad and short lighting depends more on the subject's angle of um, hit angle, should I say, um, and the angle of the light illuminating that side of the face. So depending on which side your model is looking and which side the key light is placed, that will depend if you have broad and short lighting. All right, so let me show you here. I have here on my slideshow, my dummy head, <laughs> always using the dummy head, why not? Um, I've split her face in two. So we have uh, the red side and the blue side. And as you can see, both sides are equally wide in a manner of speaking. Now, if the model had to turn her face, at least from a camera's point of view, we can see that one side, one side has become shorter and the other side has become broader. If the model turned her face, we can see the opposite side has now become the broad side. The other side has now become the short side, at least from the camera's point of view. So broad lighting depends, or short lighting and broad lighting depends on which side the face is illuminated. So if you're illuminating the short side, that is called short lighting. So that is with your main light source um, here in this example, position on camera left hand side, illuminating the short side of the model's face. Now, inversely, um, when the main light source is moved to the right-hand side and it is illuminating the broad side of the model's face, this is broad lighting. Here we can see an example of short lighting. 
So here the camera, sorry, the light, should I say, the key light is positioned on the camera's left-hand side and with a model's face facing the light itself. This is a good example of short lighting. Now, if we, if we had to move the key light to the right-hand side and we asked the model to turn her face again, this is creating short lighting yet again. So as I said, this depends on the um, angle of light and which side the model is looking at. So if it's illuminating the short side of the face, that is short lighting. Now, this is an example of broad lighting. So again, with the key light position camera left, this is illuminating, sorry, illuminating the broad side of the model's face. It's a good example of broad lighting right here. And again, with the key light position on the camera right-hand side now, illuminating the broad side of the face. Again, another example of broad lighting. Hello, thank you for joining from Cape Town. Do you appreciate? All right, so to reiterate, broad and short lighting depends on which side you're illuminating. So if a model turns her face, one side becomes shorter than the other side, at least from a camera's point of view. And depending on where you place the key light, uh, your main light source, that will create either short lighting or broad lighting. So when you're illuminating the short side, that is short lighting. When you're illuminating the broad side, that is broad lighting. Hello, Neo from Potchester, and thank you for joining. Always glad to see comments. All right, so you can see a lighting setup, uh, just to explain or show you uh, where the light needs to be, more or less speaking. So this is an example of short lighting. So you can see the light is positioned on the right-hand side and the model is facing the light as well. This good example of short lighting, as I said. All right, now with the light position on the opposite side, this is illuminating the broad side of the face now, thus providing broad lighting. And we'll jump into this program a little bit later as well. This program, program should I say, called Satellite 3D. We'll show you how that works in a little bit. Okay, here are some actual examples of broad lighting. So you can see with the main light source uh, illuminating the broad side of our model's faces. Sorry if again you're barking in the background, that would be my pug. Always something to bark at. <laughs> Here's <laughs> um, a couple of examples of short lighting. So the light illuminating the short side of the face. So you may already tell what short lighting and broad lighting does, generally speaking, to the shaping of the model's face or the sculpting of the model's face. Also in terms of mood and general look and feel, you can see vast differences between the two as well. So just to show you for broad lighting again, you can see generally speaking, it's a very open, um, it's a very inviting look, no manner of speaking, where the short lighting tends to be more on the dramatic, more contrasty um, side of things. Okay, a couple of more examples of short lighting. All right, so let's talk about the benefits of short lighting. So there are several situations in which short lighting can be used effectively. So in short, it can narrow the face. It provides plenty of contrast in terms of face sculpting and the um, shaping of your model's face. In addition, it adds a sense of drama and mood. If you're looking for practical reasons, short lighting can be used to hide certain facial imperfections if you're so inclined. And the angle of light also creates very pleasant catch lights. Now in terms of broad lighting, Broad lighting typically widens the face. So if you have a person with a very narrow face or skinny face, broad lighting can be used to uh, compensate with that. Uh, the casting of the further side, sorry, the casting of the shadow on the further side of the face. So this tends to be a bit more or less dramatic, a bit more inviting. Um, it's a bit more of an open look, no matter of speaking. So in terms of broad lighting, it also avoids exaggerating certain facial features. So in terms of a big nose, um, a very big eye ridge, I um, don't know what else we can mention. Yeah, just certain facial imperfections that you may want to tone down a little bit. Broad lighting will serve a good um, purpose here. The thing about broad lighting is that you do tend to lose the catch lights. I'll talk about catch lights just in a little bit. 
All right. So just as a side note, I just want to talk about catch lights. If I just can take a couple of minutes just to talk about catch lights. The catch lights are an essential component of portrait photography, adding depth, dimension, and life to your subject. These are the reflections created by your light sources around the model. So in particular, the key light will create the bigger um, catch light in the eye. Furthermore, catch lights can direct attention to the eyes as well. It also gives the impression that the model is looking at something important or engaging. So just to add a bit of spark to your model's eyes, catch lights are important. However, if you want to lose the catch lights for whatever reasons, and typically to create a bit of a villainous look, you can diminish the role of the catch lights. Um, it's like watching an animated movie. Typically, the villains will have no catch lights. The cute little talking animals will have massive catch lights. And our heroes will have just a slightly smaller catch light. So just to reiterate, um, when using broad lighting, you may lose the catch light. So this is something to be um, mindful of. All right, so just going to reiterate a couple of points. So in short, um, short lighting is great for dramatic contrasty results, whilst at the same time creating a slimming effect on your model's face. However, certain facial features such as a larger nose, deep set eyes, or a massive eye ridge, for example, uh, may be exaggerated when using short lighting. Um, but if you want that contrasty, um, very engaging look, then short lighting, sorry, short lighting here um, is a good technique to use. When it comes to broad lighting, um, it can create a widening effect when it comes to skinnier faces. The overall results tend to be a bit more open and inviting as well, um, if not a little bit friendlier in a manner of speaking. However, be careful not to use, um, not to lose those catch lights. So that would be the example of broad lighting. So you can see the catch lights are just slightly diminished, if not totally removed from this image. Whereas here, we can see the addition of those catch lights. That is with short lighting, we'll typically have those catch lights. With broad lighting, you know, just be careful not to lose those. Okay, so you can see the catch lights disappearing here. So if you're inclined to remove the catch lights, or if you want to use an additional light source, for example, a fill-in light to recapture those catch lights, that may be a good idea as well. And here we can see with short lighting, you can see the overall mood and look that short lighting creates. It's a bit more moodier, it's a bit contrasty as well. So if you're inclined to create images like this, you need to position the light source um, to illuminate the short side of the model's face. Okay, another example, so a couple of examples of short lighting. All right, so I don't need, uh, sorry, I don't know if I need to reiterate a couple of points. So if you are still um, pondering about a couple of things, um, if you're not certain of something, please do ask the questions in the comments section. So short lighting, good for narrowing the face, um, provides plenty of uh, contrast, face sculpting in other words. As a sense of drama and mood can be used to hide certain imperfections. Um, and the angle of light creates nice pleasant catch lights as well. When it comes to broad lighting, this widens the face, casting a shadow on the further side of the face. Um, so the general look here is more inviting, it's a bit more open. You can also exa um, avoid exaggerating certain facial features, but also be careful not to lose the catch lights. All right, so what I'm going to do now is jump into a program called Satellite 3D. So I'm just going to do that now, just to give you a bit of a visual as to how to create all of these looks. All right, so this is the program called Satellite 3D. So it's a 3D representation of a studio environment. Here you can add different light sources. You can change the light shapers. You can change the posing of the model, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so just to give you a bit of a, a preview in terms of what you can do in your own actual studio. All right, so I have a question here. Broad lighting is when you use one light. So all of these examples um, I've showed you, that is with the use of one light only. 
Now, typically, it is a good idea to add a second light as well. That is to provide a fill-in light. So for fill-in light, that just um, helps to lift the shadows just ever so slightly, just depending on the overall contrast that you want to create. So just to reiterate, all of these examples used only one light source. Um, the same with short lighting as well. All right, so here's our setup at the moment. So as you can see, my light source, should I say my light source, is positioned on the right-hand side. And it's illuminating the shorter side of a model's face. So this being short lighting. Now if I ask the model to move, Okay, so I'm going to move the light as well. So get more light on her face. And here we have an example of broad lighting. So just a simple change in pose, depending on which direction of a model is looking, this will change um, from short lighting to broad lighting or vice versa. So if you don't mind, I think I'm going to change the pose of a model just to get that elbow out of the way. There we go. All right, so for light position on the right-hand side here, as an example, uh, illuminating the broad side of the face, this is broad lighting. And if the model had to look in this direction, if we place the light more on the right-hand side, it's a little bit more side on. Again, an example of short lighting now. So short lighting indication is when the shadow side of the face um, is closest to the camera. So you can see that shadow side on her right cheek, that facing the camera, good indication of short lighting. We can also see the added contrast and moodiness that we create here with the specific look as well. Now, as mentioned, we can add a fill-in light. I'm just going to add an additional light source. So it's quite overpowering at the moment. I'll just diminish that. Just about there, and I think we can add a softbox to it as well. Maybe an 80 by... 120. Okay, so the softbox reduced the light ever so slightly, so we're just going to pump that up. All right, so this is still short lighting, but we added an additional light source just to fill in the shadows, just ever so slightly. And here you can play around with the settings of the full in light. So if you want a flatter look, you can increase the intensity of that full in light. If you want to get that contrast, that depth and dimension again, you can just reduce the intensity of that full in light. So let's ask our model to turn again. Oops, <laughs> I'm turning the entire background. Sorry, I missed it. Okay, so this is going to be broad lighting again. It's going to move the light just to get more light on her face. camera. Oh, sorry, when I do these lives, my PC tends to slow down <laughs> to a halt. There you go. All right, so again, broad lighting, but with the additional um, uh, light source providing a bit of fill-in light. Okay, there you have it. So, so this is something I tend to do in a studio, right? So I tend to experiment um, as far as the placement of my key light is concerned. So I'm just going to get my face back. And I tend to experiment in terms of my key light placement. So I tend to put the key light on the left-hand side, then the right-hand side, I ask my model to do a different uh, variety of different poses. And I'll experiment with short lighting and broad lighting. So after taking a bunch of different images, um, I'll show the model the results as well. And I'll determine from the results, you know, which you know, typically look better in terms of the model or the particular mood or, um, you know, look and feel that I'm after. 
All right, so it's worthwhile experimenting a little bit. You know, move your key light around, experiment with short and broad lighting. Oops, my battery depleted. Sorry, just give me a moment. Sorry, I'll get it, but I'll write back now. I'm just going to... There I am, audio activated, so many uh, gremlins in the system today. So I do apologize for that, but here I am again. All right, so um, so we have a bunch of people still watching, that is good. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions to ask because I think I'm kind of at the end of my presentation. So hopefully you learned something about broad and short lighting. Um, I don't know if I need to reiterate a couple of points, um, but yeah, do you drop a comment in the comment section and um, yeah, see if you can keep me around. So I'm going to go back to my satellite 3D. Okay, I'm just going to delete this light. I'm just going to repeat a couple of points. Come on. Yeah, so an easy way to remember this is short lighting is when your model is pointing in the direction of your key light. So you can see here the model is facing the key light. So that will create short lighting, thus illuminating the short side of the model's face. Another easy way to remember broad lighting is when your model is facing away from the key light. Now this is creating a lot of hectic shadows on the face. What we can do otherwise is just pull the light ever so slightly to the side over. So we have a good example of broad lighting right here. Now, if you don't like the intensity of the shadows, as mentioned, you can add a fill-in light just to lift the shadows ever so slightly according to your um, specific needs. Short lighting. And broad lighting. So it's an easy shift between the two, depending on which side of the face you illuminate. As you can see, quite pronounced differences between the two. So I'm often inclined to do short lighting because I do like uh, the amount of contrast, depth, and dimension that I get out of short lighting. Um, as opposed to broad lighting, I tend not to use broad lighting that very often. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm also inclined to do short lighting for a variety of good reasons. As mentioned, that depth, that moodiness that I get from short lighting, that reason number one. Um, secondly, that big catch light in the eye, depending on the light source that you're using, obviously. But you do get that catch light in the eye if you make use of short lighting. All right, so I don't know if you can experiment with the composers. This example of broad lighting, and again, short lighting. It's giving us a bit of a kick. So <laughs> we have to look at, let's make a twirl around. Whee! <laughs> okay, I'm just playing around now. All right, so short lighting again. And broad lighting. As I mentioned, this also depends on the position of our key light. So if we shift the key light around, we have now shifted to well, this would be broad lighting. Let's move that light around to get more light in the face. So broad lighting here and short lighting. I think that light may be a little bit too bright. There we go. Now this is short lighting in combination with Rembrandt lighting as well. 
So you can see that triangle on the opposite side of the face, specifically around the cheekbone area. That would be a good example of Rembrandt lighting in combination with short lighting. So as mentioned, you can combine short lighting and broad lighting with Rembrandt lighting, loop lighting, and side lighting as well. Okay, I'm not fancying this pose, the kick pose. All right. Okay, so I think that's the end of my presentation. It's been a good uh, close to 30 minutes. Again, apologies for the amount of gremlins that we had tonight. So I had to do the live stream again. So the previous live stream, I think that just went into some abyss. I don't know what happened to it, uh, but yeah. So again, apologies for the amount of gremlins and also my battery depleting. Um, but yeah, we still got our session done. So thank you for joining, um, unless you have questions to ask. So if you're still watching, do drop your questions. And um, even if it doesn't relate to broad and short lighting, I mean, you have me for whatever amount of time yeah, so make use of me. <laughs> Take advantage. So if you're watching, if you have any questions to ask, give them in the comment section. Okay, so a couple of questions I want to ask you. So which one do you favor? Do you favor short lighting or broad lighting? Or is it a horses for courses type of thing? Yeah, so as mentioned, experiment on a day. Move your light to one side, move it to the other side, ask your model to look left and right, um, yeah, and gauge from the results as to which um, you know, combination of things tend to look better. Also, I think it's a good idea to show the model as well. You know, models will typically know what is her you know, good side versus bad side. You know, they'll be very aware of that um, and yeah, open up that communication. Um, yeah, so it's a tag team effort after all. So yeah, get discussing with your model and see which works better on the day, short lighting, broad lighting, and the position of the key light as well. Okay, so, don't see any questions. So I think that's gonna be it from our side. So thank you for joining tonight. Um, it's been a good session. Do check out our YouTube channel and Facebook for future lives. I'm gonna do a lot more of these. Um, so yes, that's it gonna be, that's it gonna be from my side. So thank you for joining. Um, have a pleasant night further. So that's it for me, Conrad, signing off. So ending broadcast, and we have the awkward.